Today let's talk about custom made throat plates. Nothing better than do it yourself free stuff, right? This one's seven way adjustable. We have four on the top, two on the sides, and one in the front. All right? All you have to really do is make sure you leave a little room for your thickness for these screws to be protruding just a hair. Your plate might change size and whatever over the years and you want to be able to have each screw take up that slop and not have the wood bottoming out. All right? So once you have those four top ones done, make sure that they're a little bit countersunk too so that as you raise these up and move them around, you're not going to trip over them with wood and plastic and stuff. Adding these two side ones, same thing, only they only need to go flush. They don't need to go subsurface because that won't do you any good. The one in back is just simply a screw that's had a little part of the head flattened. It's tough to show this. I guess you can see it there. That is just going to be equal to the overhang you have here, that thickness. All right? The bottom of here, if you look, this has been backfilled with epoxy once or twice. So it's pretty easy to fix your errors, if you will. I stuffed in a piece of styrene that was coated with a piece of tape, set it down on a table, and I forced the styrene against the one side by putting little shims against this side. Then I backfilled it with uh, epoxy. Then I forced it away, pulled it out, and did the same thing to the other side. So in, you know, it was a little bit of screwing around, but I didn't want to get rid of this throat plate because it works so good. So I did the same thing on the other side and we made it work. Today it's getting a little ratty. She could use another adjustment, if you will. So because it's all nice and chopped up inside, adding epoxy makes it stick real good. It has some good undulations in there to stick to. So this is a pretty simple thing to make. I also added this on front, which is pretty handy. Just raise your blade up and put a scale on either side of your blade and give yourself a couple of dimensions. A nice fine black line on either side of the red was done with a real fine sharpie, one of those real micro sharpies. And that way, it's nice when you take a piece of wood and you have a little mark on it, you can move your wood up right until the edge of the black line and find out where you're going to cut without moving up into the danger zone of the blade. Let's say you just had a line on a piece of wood and you didn't know if it was four inches or three or whatever it was. Besides, you're not going to cut up against the edge of a fence anyway. But this gives you a good start of where you're going to be right away. It's just a, something that you might add. It helps with accuracy a little bit. You guys let me know what you think.